Hello and back to YCFT Yellow Bellies. I think this should be after Cam Scare, so I'm just going to go We're going to go with, with it. that. I don't know if it works or not, but we'll see. But we are going all the way back to 2001 today. Yes. It's over 20 years ago. It is over 20 years ago. We are talking about The Others. This, for me, this was the... Before doing this video, I'd only ever seen it the once. Yes. So this was my, my, fir my first viewing. It was. But you, you have a very special relationship with this film. You I do. I would probably go so far as to say that this is probably my favourite supernatural horror of all time. And I think in terms of horror films in general, it's definitely within like my top five. It could even be within my top three. I love this film. This was a, like a family favourite film of ours. Me, my mum and my dad, we would watch this a lot when I was a kid. It's not a family Which, film. Though. It's considering the, the, the plot of this film, and we are going deep into spoiler territory throughout this video. It's not it's not kid friendly. <laughs> no, this it is. Film. I don't know how it turned into a family movie, but it did. So yeah, I I have a lot of uh, fun yeah, memories. I of am this not one. really needed in this video. <laughs> I'm just, this is just going to be me geeking out. Yeah, I, no, no, I'm no. just say I I did enjoy it. I enjoy the gothic yes. atmosphere, the tension yes. building. It's like someone's like. It's like pulling back on a bow and just holding there for ages. Yes. You don't even know if there's an arrow in it, but just tension, 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 It's just tension, tension, tension. tension. I know. And, um, I think modern movies are just programmed me to expect a jump scare, but they just don't come. Yeah. I think I was pretty good at guessing that. Like, Do you want to go through the, the plot of this? The very basic plot of this film. So it's set in 1945 at the end of World War II, and we focus on Grace who is played by Nicole Kidman, who is living in this beautiful old gothic mansion in Jersey on the Channel Islands in Britain um, with her two children. And her two children suffer from this disease. I can't quite remember what it's called, but they are extremely allergic to sunlight. And as a result of that, they live in literal darkness. P perpetual darkness. Perpetual darkness. So... Grace has made it a mission for herself to make sure all the curtains are closed, um, minimal light, wherever. So Grace herself is also living in darkness. And one day we learn um, she wakes up one morning and her servants have all quit, unanimously quit. They have disappeared into the night, which frustrates her further. She's already kind of at her wit's end at this point, dealing with, you know, these two children. She can't leave them alone for too long. She's got to constantly live husband in darkness. Husband went off to war. The husband has gone off to war. He hasn't returned from war. So she's kind of clinging on to hope that he could come back. But obviously it's not looking she, likely. The kids believe the war is still going on. But yes. Yeah. They, they don't want to believe that daddy isn't coming home. So she's kind of living at her wit's end. The servants have disappeared and that's sort of the final straw until one day we begin the film where these three very mysterious servants knock on the door to the house and they say that they are answering an advertisement for servants. So they fulfil the role of the servants. Um, and how much more do you want me to get into it right now? Should we talk a little bit about, before we get into proper spoiler territory, yeah. just spoiler territory, just... Talk a little bit more about the film and Nicole Kidman, who is the star, and what was the name of the director? The director is a guy called Alejandro Amenabar. So, Spanish. Uh, this is basically a, a Spanish movie, but it's in the English language. It was filmed, the vast majority of it was filmed in Spain. Well, some outside shots that were filmed in Kent. Yes. So, the, the exteriors of the house, um, that is in a part of Spain... Um, the interiors were entirely a set, which kind of blew my mind when I, I always thought it was like a real house, but it is, it's all a set and the set design in this film is absolutely it really stunning. Is. And yeah, the house there was, feels, it feels like a character. It, it is a character. It, it definitely is. Um, and so, yeah, the, the film sort of picks up where the servants come in, they integrate themselves into the house. Um... One of them, well, we've got Mr. Tuttle, we've got Mrs. Mills, and we've got Lydia. Lydia is the youngest. She's mute. She doesn't speak. We've got Mrs. Mills, who is kind of the leader of them. She very much takes charge. Um, who's played by fin Finula Flanagan. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. She's a very famous Irish actress. And Eric Sykes, who's a very famous British actor. 
and comedian who plays Mr. Tuttle, and he takes on the role of the gardener. So it's a little bit mysterious. It's even more mysterious when we we discover the the advertisement for the servants, the letter was never actually posted. So these servants have just arrived out of the blue. Um, and they say it's because they once worked in the house many years before and they just came by on the off chance if there were any posts available for servants. Anyway, so Grace, she's a little bit suspicious, but she desperately needs help with the kids and with the house. So she allows them to stay. And strange things begin happening inside the I think house. Strange things start happening prior to that. It's the yes. little girl. What, what are the name of the kids? Anne and Nicholas. Anne sees ghosts. Anne does see ghosts, and but she also she's a bit of a fibber. So it's a a brother doesn't yeah. believe her, and a mum doesn't believe her. But she gives them very little reason to Anne... believe. And Grace yeah. is very. She is very religious. Yes, she follows what is said in the Bible to a fault, even when things start happening that she cannot explain. She's on the cusp of believing in the supernatural, but her beliefs hold her back. Like, her religious yes. beliefs hold her back. Yes, yes. You can imagine the the day-to-day of this family. I mean, yeah, you've got a mum who is just completely Christian in every sense of the words. She raises her children to be the same. She gives them Bible class, Bible study, um, very kind of strict, very regimented Punishments or just reading bits of Bible? Bits of the Bible, you know. So, and Anne is the eldest of the two children and she is a little bit of a troublemaker. She's the rebellious one. She's the naughty one. And she and her mum have a very kind of fractured relationship Nicholas is the younger brother and he's a lot more timid and he's much more of like a mummy's boy, I think it's fair to say. He's much more affectionate with his mum, whereas Anne kind of likes to keep... Anne's, I don't know, like, Anne, yeah, she's the rebellious one, isn't she? Yeah. She still loves her mum, but she's she's the naughty one. And we also learn that Anne rem- has a memory of something that was presumably quite traumatic that involved her, her brother and the mum. Now, we don't really find out what this is until much later on in the film, but Anne keeps referring back to this day when Mummy went mad. Now, the servants also try and figure out exactly what happened that day, but whenever Anne broaches the topic, Mum Grace shuts it down, and Nicholas does not even want to think about it either. So we know that events have happened prior to the film starting. We know that there's something not quite right, but when the servants do arrive... Anne starts to see ghosts. We can't see them, we can hear them, and we can sense that there's something there, but it's only Anne that can actually see them. Yeah. But And so what this drawing is, yeah, these are all the ghosts that she has seen. So this is the family. Um, this you ba- is what you base that off to. what Anne draws in the so film. So this is, yeah, I do like to draw, and I, I, am, I, I, like, to, uh, I like to art. Uh, this is based on Anne's drawing. Um, and of course, the, the numbers here correspond to the number of times that Anne has seen these people wandering around her house. Yeah. But Anne is also adamant that they're not ghosts, strangely yeah. she enough. She says that ghosts... She have... has a childlike view of what a ghost yeah, is. Yeah, it's like, wears sheets and have chains. Yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. The, she sees these as actual people roaming around the house. Yeah. And obviously Grace does start to like... No, she thinks that someone is in her house. She begins to also Nicole hear Kidman, things... I was like, but thank God we're using it. Tom Cruise produced this. Well, they were together at the time. Yeah. I think this was near the end of their relationship. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, she obviously carries this film. She's wonderful. She has some great interactions with Mrs. Mills. Yes. But for the most part, she's doing a lot of these scenes wandering around this house on her own. Yes. And you, yeah. you, you never get bored of her. She is, no. she is fantastic. She's, and I, yeah. She's, I think if anyone else did this role, it wouldn't. The film wouldn't nearly be as good. It is on Netflix, by the way, at the minute, guys. People in the UK. Yes, it is on Netflix. I'm so happy it's on Netflix. I hope so many people see this film. Um, but yeah, the, the majority of the movie is Grace kind of wandering around the house, of, again, in darkness, you know, with a, those old kind of gas lights. What are they? Like those old... Like, it's kind of like a lantern-y type it's, thing. It is like a lantern, yeah. She's wandering around. She's trying to figure out where all these noises are coming from. Because the house has no electricity because of... Bombings during the war. Just yeah, the, the elect- electricity was cut off, so they've learned to live without electricity. And I think one of the biggest strengths of this film, honestly, is, again, this fact that 
the house has to be in darkness. They cannot switch on the lights. They it, it's when she becomes convinced that there are maybe intruders that have moved into the house. She obviously can't do what she really needs to do, which is you know get the light in and you know search like every crevice easily anyway yeah. because of the children. It's something I really like. She obviously gives very clear instructions that there are lots of doors in this place. When when you enter one room, you must close the door behind you before leaving through another door. Yeah. So it's obviously to stop light from going, yeah. like going in. And so as the film progresses, I mean, you slowly start seeing more and more doors just being open. Yeah, exactly. And I, I love this whole... The, the, it's a very simple twist in, in the classic haunted house horror where we end up actually kind of being a bit scared of the light because we are so used yeah. to being in darkness with these characters. The only film I can think that gives you a similar version to light would be something like Midsummer. Not in, as in the light itself scary, but the, the majority of the film is set during the day. Yes, exactly. Daytime is usually the safe yeah. place. The house, even during daytime, it's surrounded by a fog. It is shrouded in fog, literally shrouded in fog, um, and yet. Yeah, so you see uh, Christopher Eccleston right before his. Uh, Christopher break. Eccleston. He um, plays. He plays. He plays Charles, her husband. Yeah, obviously this is like just a couple of years before you'd be cast as a uh, Doctor Who. Yeah, he's not. He doesn't have a big. Doesn't part have a big in part this. in it because I don't. You, I don't think he was a big name at the time. No, a haunting part. In yeah. This. Yeah, um, and yeah, I mean, I I'm kind of curious to know what your reaction was just because this was your first time watching it yeah as it, like we are going to go into spoilers yeah on this one like before we go into like the heavy spoilers if you haven't seen this i would and you do want to go and check it out i would highly recommend watching it it's, i think because i've seen a lot of like obviously conjuring based movies and all the movies that have been inspired by that i have a certain expectation as to what a supernatural or haunted house film should be this kind of goes back to a simpler time. It's almost like a stage production. It could easily be a stage. In a way, there's production. a lot of there's a lot of like oh yeah, tension building without a release. Well, uh, it's just a, it feel gothic is the best way it to describe is gothic. it. It's very very gothic. It's a supernatural gothic horror, and we hear things. We approve, the sound design in this film is is brilliant. We hear footsteps thumping. We hear children laughing or crying. We hear audible gasps of unknown things. And we hear it as Grey starts to hear it. So we're kind of just as confused and worried follow, like yeah, she is. We find out just as she's finding out. Now, I, I guess I always pride myself being able to work out twists. And I think I, I was so close. I got bits of it. So this is the, spo the spoiler warning here. First, I'm going to... Spoil it, how I learned what was going on. My first guess was that the staff were dead, that they were ghosts. Yeah. I was correct. You were Later correct. on in the film, I was like, I feel like Grace and the kids are the ones. I, I switched it and I was like, I feel like they're dead. And I was right. They are dead. The bit that I didn't get is the ghosts that we are seeing is the family who wants to buy the house or have bought the house. And the scary old woman that they keep... That, and keep seeing, which we only ever see in like one or two scenes. Yeah, is a psychic. Mm -hmm. Well, she is she has come to try and communicate with the ghost. They're having a séance. Mm -hmm. No way in hell I could have saw that coming. So I was right. I was I was right. I just couldn't. I know. I missed one bit. So. I would have loved for you to have had like the reaction I really wanted, which was, oh, they're dead. Oh my God, they're the ghosts. I didn't get it because you did kind of figure let's, it out. Let's but... be fair. The servants are so suspicious. They could only be dead. Well, I mean, Grace the does scene, The scene when they're outside and they come up to the door, like come up to the closed door. Yes. That is so haunting. That, I remember watching that when I was little. That And that scene, one of many petrified me because to me, I don't know if it was the same for you, but it almost looks like they're halfway through the door. Yeah, I think that's just the way they filmed it. It's like, obviously they're dead. I just got goosebumps talking about it, but it's almost like they can't quite break through, but they, they are sort of in the door because it almost looks like one more step yeah. and they'll be There's one in scene that where, house. The first scene where oh. Grace does see the, the old woman ghost. Yes. It's 100% taken from Evil Dead. Because she kind of dresses Anna in what is it, a Holy Communion? It's a communion dress. Yeah. Which she's but she turns around, sees she's on the floor, looks up to her, white eyes, this old woman's face. Oh. And she loses it. She instantly thinks that 
this woman, this old woman has taken her child, not realizing that it is just a daughter. So her daughter is now absolutely terrified of her. But that scene, the way she's looking up, it almost it. It's very reminiscent of Evil Dead. I never, yeah, I mean, I know you you adore Evil Dead. I never, I've never clocked on to that, but you probably are very right. Yeah, there is yeah. like maybe. But now we know. It. That is a very famous scene. In the but film. now we know that in that scene, Anne was actually possessing her. Yes. Anne was possessing the medium or the medium, medium was yeah, channeling like Anne. Yeah. For whatever reason... Anne is the one that the medium can communicate with the most. Hence yeah. why Anne can see the family. And the reason they brought the medium in is because Anne has communicated a lot with the new family's son. Victor. Victor. Who's a similar age. Yeah, who we are led to believe is a ghost. We never, we only ever see him either in silhouette or in sound. Yes. Obviously, we learn that Victor is a little boy. He's moved into this house with his family. And he's and just it very is, scared. It is Grace, it is Anne, and it is Nicholas who are the ghosts. And we tragically learn that this event that Anne alludes yeah, that mummy to went mad. when Mummy went mad, <sighs> Mummy has been a kind of ticking time bomb, basically, yeah. over the years. Husband has gone off to war. She's living in darkness. She's dealing with these two children, the daughter of which can be very, very difficult. She's near breaking point. And then one day, her servants leave her. They abandon her. And she snaps. Not, obviously, you know, it's a very tragic thing, but the film does, I think, a good job of contextualising her. It's not madness. It's just, what is it? It's just desperation. Yeah. Absolutely desperation. And she, and so we learn that Grace, she smothers her two children and then she shoots herself. So, she, yeah, they are haunting this house. And they are haunting this house. But they strangely get, like, they're more of a family in death than they ever were in life. This it's is a, what I can... There's a piece. Point, there's a there's a piece. I think. That... I think what made, started making me think that she was dead is when she leaves because she keeps asking for a priest. She wants the house to be blessed. Yeah. She goes. She leaves the house to go and try and get the priest, and they say, "Oh, she, no, she'll not get past the fog." And I was like, "This fog has been." I, that was the cl the first clue to me that she's not this. I, this constant idea of the place being a prison that there's boundaries that can't mm. be crossed. Yeah, I've seen a lot of house haunting films to me it's like yo if she can't cross a certain boundary then to me that means that she could be dead but that is when her husband does come back and we was there ever him. a point of view where you thought he was actually coming back from war when you first watched I, it I think I always knew I can't remember the first time I watched it but every time I do now I'm like he's he's dead yeah so the way he's he talks dead. about sometimes I bleed sometimes he's I very bleed. traumatised obviously he's died at here's a theory for you now you said that her servants left her and that she never actually sees them leave. Could she could she have broken, smothered her children, and then as she's came back as a ghost, the house is just empty? I used to think that. I used to think that, that the reason that she thought they left is because she was actually dead at that point yeah. and she could no longer see anything that was living. I used to hold on to that for so long until I read online, and I think that was the only thing that changed my mind, but people, for some reason, are online are like, no, 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 they left. And that was when she snapped. That was her breaking point. But it could, I think you yeah. could interpret it in one of two ways. I don't think there's a right or wrong there, really. Yeah. You could just say that, yeah, she did just I snap. think she had a breaking point. Yeah. But I, to me, that's just how it played out in my mind. It's like, she, they then people, bleh, 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 bleh. to me, it just makes more sense that for them for her just to wake up one morning, one day and they're gone, entirely gone. They did naturally disappear. They're they didn't actually there. disappear, that she's been dead for a long time. Yeah. Could be. It could be you could interpret it in one of two ways. But then how long have they been dead and living in that house? I think a couple of years. Oh, do you think? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. I see. I don't think it's been that long. Because she says I think it's only been about a week since they left. I don't the house said the house has come under a bit, a bit of like disrepair because it's oh yeah. not disrepair necessarily. It's, I think it's been at least a little while. I think we're still in the forties. It's it's because when you see the family, they're not dressed to that. That's a forties fifties outfit, yeah. I think. Easy. So uh, they they've been dead long enough for the house to have been put up on the market and for a family to come and view it and buy it. Yeah, so I, I think it's been a little while, but I don't think it's been a week. Because I think they bought the new family has bought it. They put up for sale at the end because it's haunted. So I, I yeah, I think okay. it's been a little while. And obviously, we obviously find out that 
because we find her. She fi- Grace. She finds a, a book of the the death, book of the dead, which is like a oh apparently yes. something people used to do where they take a picture of people when they're dead. As in a way that their souls would continue living. Oh, so she finds the missing people. page, which shows all three servants have died in Tobago. As soon as they mention, like, oh, the tuberculosis drove us out. I was like, oh, yeah, they're dead. Yeah, they're so, so, they are so dead. So the characters of the servants are quite interesting. Mrs. Mills, Mr. Tuttle, and Lydia. Mrs. So, Mills is very creepy. She's brilliant. She's so good. She is I wish I could pronounce her name properly, but I think it's Finula. <laughs> I think it is. Anyway, yeah, Lydia is, we mentioned she's mute. And Grace... Throughout her time with Mrs. Mill, she keeps on asking, well, why was she born that way? No, she she just one day stopped talking. Well, you know, no one just stops talking. Like, what? There must have been a trauma. And we subsequently learned from Mrs. Mills that the day Lydia discovered she was dead is the day she stopped talking. She's never spoken a word since. Now, we learn that Mrs. Mills, Mr. Tuttle and Lydia, they died in the house on account of tuberculosis. Presumably, they've been in that house ever since. Why do you think they appear at the door to, to Grace randomly that, that day? I think it's, they know from past experience that accepting you are dead is, difficult. is, a, is, is a process. So do you think as ghosts, they've seen everything that's happened? Yeah, they've, absolutely. They've they know, seen they her absolutely, kill her you, can tell, you, can, you can tell they know. They're, they're there to help. Ultimately, yeah. they want to help her accept the situation that you are dead you were stuck in this house, but there's no reason why we can't just continue on as we are. You can't leave this house. This is part of the deal. Yeah. And it is fascinating because the film has a lot of themes and it just, it raises a lot of interesting ideas. Obviously, religion is a big part of Grace and the children's life, but they also discuss purgatory and what it is to be in purgatory, this idea of limbo. You know, you're caught between heaven and hell. You're stuck. You can't quite move on. And that is th- that. That's ultimately where they find themselves. They are literally stuck in this house, the, the the place where she considered to you know a prison. She's stuck for eternity. Yeah, presumably. Which, once she finds out, I almost feel like a weight is lifted. I think it is lifted, and I've i the the seance scene I find fascinating because not only is it a hell of a twist, and uh, you know I I think it's one of the brilliant twists in all of horror. It's so good. Um. But yeah, it's like when when Grace is met with that reality, when the, when the psychic says, is that how she killed you with a pillow? And Grace's reaction is, you know, head, hand, head in the hands and she just can't. She knows full well. She has that memory. She has tried to repress it and repress it yeah. and repress it. And we get little nods throughout the film. Like when she cocks the, the shotgun and there's a pause. Yeah. You know, like there's like a... Almost like deja vu. Well, it's like when she goes and lies by Anne. Anne's like deadly still. Yeah. For a lot, for that, it's holding that shot for a long moment. That was another hint to me. I was like, yeah. is, she, is she dead? And when Anne asks, he says to her brother, you know, do you remember when she went mad that day? And Nicholas kind of, you know, no. Like there's trauma there and he is, but he is mask. He can't, He his little brain just cannot accept it yeah. and he doesn't want to think about it. So... There are clues throughout the film yeah. as to what is going on. But yeah, ultimately they are the ghosts. They are the intruders yeah. in the house. It's weird. This, I don't know, if we're in a weird world that would be a sequel. So the kind of line is like, this is our house, this is our house and we will we will not be asked, made to leave or something like that, she says at the end of it. She says this house is ours. Yeah. No one can make us leave this house. To me it's like, house. they are going to be poltergeists. They are going to be poltergeists. Mrs. Mills also says something interesting, doesn't she? She's like, now sometimes we will sense when, you know people come into the house other times we won't which i find quite interesting i know this is obviously a fictional film it's like is the house that is quite an interesting concept about being dead if someone was living in that house are they only seeing the house as they saw it i think they are i don't think the house will change yeah for them i don't think it will which is this it's fascinating isn't it we're actually seeing it from the ghost point of view yeah like say it was real i I love the the gothic of it It it's so brilliant like in terms of horror, this is not a film that has jump scares. There's no. maybe one or two, but this is not a film that relies on them. This it's is like, it's a tragedy, is what it. It's it's hard, it's sad. It's it always gets me really emotional at the end. You know this horrible reality of like, oh my god, they're dead. She killed them, and she killed herself. They seem very accepting of that. I think <laughs> I think it's just that thing of. 
it makes sense. Yeah. And it answers a lot of questions. The only nice thing about it is now that they're dead, they're no longer photosensitive. Yeah. To light. Sometimes. Dead is better. Dead is better. <laughs> Sometimes. Dead is better. But yeah, I... Um, anyone guess what that's from? Yeah, tell us. But um, yeah, I think the production design as well all lends into this like amazing gothic setting. The house, the rooms. It's very... It's quite a luxurious house. I mean, it's a huge mansion. Um, and every room is just... It's like a treat when you go into it. Yeah. It's just like... I imagine as a kid living there, it must be spooky, but it must also be like great for playing yeah. hide and seek. It's brilliant. And yeah, the, the very famous scene where Anne playing with the puppet, with the, the veil, and yeah. it's the old woman. That has been parodied many, many times. It's arguably perhaps one of the most famous scenes. Was it in scenes. Scary Movie 2 or 3? Three. Three. Yeah. With Michael Jackson, <laughs> which is also really good. But it's creepy as hell, you know, just this bony hand playing yeah. with the puppet. Um, and that's kind of... The, the film plays with tension and it plays with atmosphere. It's not scare, 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 scare. It's very slow building. It takes its time. And you are stuck in this house with these yeah. characters. It's like every time you see light shining through a doorway, you know, it's kind of jarring because you're not you're not used to it. And the first sort of real scare we have in the film is when she she goes into a room that's very bright. She goes into the junk room and she can hear people talking. She can hear whispering. And yeah. Then she starts, you know, take frantically taking off the covers from the furniture. Which in hindsight, if you think about it, from the, she starts hearing like screams almost. And obviously in the real world, in the living world of the living, these sheets have just started flying. Yes. And it, the, the sounds that she can hear are the, are the family and the psychic woman talking. She can hear the psychic woman picking up on Grace's presence yeah. in the room. And we get moments that kind of freaked you out. It's always scared me, the painting, the, you know, the ghost yeah, in the face. Yeah, that was a good one. Plays with light brilliantly yeah. in this, this film. The scene where Anne and Nicholas are in bed and apparently Victor is there. Um, that was really good. And he is frantically trying to open the curtains and we see his hand kind of touch Nicholas's yeah. cheek. Which again's like, in the world of the living, he's... This poor kid's just trying to get to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, these two dead kids are in his bed. Yeah, so they, like, they keep closing the curtains, putting him in darkness, and he's trying to open them to let the light yes. in so he can, feel sa he can feel safe. But to them, they think they're still photosensitive. They need the curtains yeah. closed. It's very... When you start like thinking of scenes with the knowledge of what the twist is, it gets really, really interesting. Yeah. And obviously it kind of crescendos where um, they wake up one morning and all the curtains have been taken down in the house. Yeah. And that's when shit really kind of well, gets real. The, the help at this point are kind of like sick of waiting for Grace to get to this conclusion Yeah, it's naturally. like, for oh, God's sake. Like, so <laughs> yeah. They need to kind of, they're like, it's too late. We, you need to know. Yeah. It's also, I, ultimately it's the psychic that has told the living family to take down the curtains because the psychic knows that that will rile up the ghosts. Yeah. That will get them going. I love this movie. If it's you can't good. Tell. It was good fun. I, if you can't tell. I, this is one of the few films where I genuinely get creeped out watching. I don't think I could watch this alone. Honestly. Like I, this I, think, is, I, could, I think I could. It's only a 12. There's no gore in it at all. But... It's the setting, it's the atmosphere, it's the sound design. It's the really tragic reality of what is actually going on, which I personally think is so much better here than they did it in The Sixth Sense. It's yeah. a very similar twist, obviously. You know, Bruce Willis is dead in that film. He doesn't realise it. I think this film did it so much better. Yeah. Also, supernatural horror is just my kind of personal favourite sub-genre of, of horror. I love slashes. I do like monster movies, but I love a ghost story. Yeah, a good I, ghost story. And I feel like The Others is just kind of like the ultimate ghost story that, that there is. Yeah? Yeah. You got any more notes? I have very few notes. This is just like all <laughs> memory at, at this point. Yeah. Um, but yeah. For first time watching, I did enjoy I enjoyed it. I'd watch it again. Yeah. And I think, yeah, well... There's no point in telling people if you don't if you've not seen it to go watch it for the twist. We've spoiled no. all of that. But even if you're just interested in like if you're interested in supernatural horror and maybe you've seen this once and you know can't yeah. quite remember. I just it want or... a supernatural horror with a really good performance. With Nicole a really... Kidman is fantastic. In it. Yeah, she's she's brilliant. She's in almost every frame of the film. Yeah. Um, it's a very just claustrophobic have, like, perpetual movie. look of anger and fear throughout the entirety. It's it's a film that will genuinely I think make you 
scared and make you look twice at, you know, a, a door that's off on its hinges or, you know, a dark corner. Yeah. It's, it plays, it plays with you and it, it really does unsettle you. And it's just, I think it's a really satisfying film. Yeah. Ultimately it is. It's very sad, but it is a great, great ride to watch it. Yeah. I can definitely see, I think the Haunting of Hill House and Haunting of Bly Manor took a lot from this film. Yeah. But you you know, interesting when you think about where the others is in terms of it was released in two thousand and one. The kind of films that we'd seen in the nineties, we didn't see a lot of supernatural horrors. Not not Western ones, anyway. No. So well, this was like quite slasher heavy in the nineties. Yeah. You know, Scream, we had a lot of teen orientated oriented yeah. horror. This was like films. classic a classic ghost story. And clearly it was a very welcome return because this film did very well. Yeah. Budget seventeen million, it made over two hundred million. Um Which for back a, in, in the early two thousands was very good. Two thousand and one guys, like that's very good. Yeah. Um for a very long time it was Spain's highest grossing film ever. So it won like an award that's not usually won by Yeah, the Goyers English Award. Speaking. Yeah. Yeah, it was which the is the very new, is... first English language film to win that award. Yeah, which is cool. That is a feat. And unfortunately, I haven't heard a lot of the director, Alejandro Amenabar. I haven't seen much of his other work, but I really think this guy is talented as hell. Oh, yeah. I mean, he wrote this film, he directed it, he also composed the score. The score is very good. The score it's very, is like, gorgeous. It, the score feels very 90s. It has that. Yeah. That, you know the 90s theme, but when you watch something like a Robin Williams type movie, you know there's a lot of that mixed in with a lot of typical horror it, musical yeah. drums and it just all it works really yeah. well yeah and they're really good at also adding to the tension of it too because when the music kind of builds and builds it's it's really really good yeah yeah i mean i i don't know i just i love it i always thought that the title was a bit maybe the title could have been better the others is just kind of a bit, bit ambiguous it's a bit too ambiguous maybe but at the same time i also don't know what it's i put me off it. watching it for so long so i'm like I, from this i literally have no idea what this is about the others yeah but you would watch it again, even now knowing the twist. Yeah. I'm not going to rush to watch it again. <laughs> no. But I would watch it again. Yeah. I, I love this movie. But I'd, I'd recommend it. I think it's an interesting one. It's a great one to watch, um, you know, spooky time, um, gothic horror, October, November. It's the best time to watch these kind of films. Yeah. It's a time where everyone who's not a massive horror fan starts watching horror movies. And yeah. There's the rest of us who watch it's them all year long anyway. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, uh, if you've not got anything else. No, I don't think so. Yeah, thanks for stopping by, guys. Yeah, check it out. If you're in the UK, it's on Netflix. And it is on Netflix. There's also apparently going to be a reboot of it or a remake. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I've not... Whatever that noise was. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that picked that up. Uh, yeah, uh, I've not heard much. anything about it other than it's been announced, but this was like early pre-pandemic time, so pre-pandemic. whether it's even still... I don't think... We'll needed. see. We will we'll see. see. But yeah, thanks for stopping by, guys. And we'll see you next week.